So today I have two Destroyer games for you in Ranked, and I want to talk about the thought process that goes into playing Destroyer, because that's what the class is all about, in my opinion. Um, it's really, really all about decision making. There's not a lot of RNG in this class, and that's one of the reasons I actually enjoy playing Destroyer. Um, I don't play it all the time, but I actually really, really have a lot of fun. And the reason I was pushing so aggressively here is I did, for one, I did not expect their cruiser to take such an aggressive line. And two, you'll notice there are no radar ships in this game, and I outgun both of their destroyers. So for me, I want to take this fight early on at sea cap. I also spawned to the right, uh, so that's why I went to the sea cap as well. Uh, something to note, you do want to send a destroyer to both flanks if you have two destroyers. That just is a great way to set up your team for success. And you'll notice I just popped my smoke, turned, and ran away. Um, didn't shoot until I knew I could shoot from cover. And we're just kind of trying to stay away from this A gear. We know he has a 6km hydro, so we're trying to stay out of that range and just kind of chill in here. Basically, with destroyer, your goal is to win territory for your team and early on that can mean capture zones but you do have to be careful radar is the biggest thing you have to worry about in this um, as well as uh, aircraft carriers um, but for the most part um, you're gonna be trying to not draw the attention of an aircraft carrier and the best way to do that is to keep your AA off and to stay reasonably close to your allies with good AA uh, that will just deter the enemy carrier from just going and hunting you and striking you over and over and over again. The more you're able to um, play with your team and be around your teammates, so, you know, me sitting next to a Riga, for example, um, they, the carrier couldn't just hover over me, right, and get me spotted and killed, right? That's just the really nice thing about having teammates around. And that's how you have to play in an aircraft carrier game. But that's not this. This is... A game without an aircraft carrier and this is where destroyers can shine and there's really not much the enemy team can do outside of their destroyers playing really 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 well um, I basically have free reign here to do whatever I want to I have a feeling this Georgia is gonna turn and try and rush our Riga so I'm just creating a little bit of distance switching to AP um, we know Georgia has slow turrets but it has decent secondaries so the only thing I'm contending with here is really the secondaries. His main guns turn way too slowly for him to get them back online. Um, at worst, will be contested with his uh, rear turret. And that's not a big deal because, you know, battleships can't do AP pens anymore. So playing a DD is really actually quite easy in scenarios like this. And the AP, you notice, is really, really strong. It is okay to give up this flank for now, just so you know. Um, me leaving the Riga here is the correct play. In this case, um, I'm getting a lot of information from my Riga. I'm forcing the Georgia to not come around behind the Riga. Um, so our Riga actually has the opportunity to just reverse out of this scenario. Uh, if I didn't come back here and I tried to force things up with the Oster Gotland or something like that, which, you know, could have been a decent play, um, this Georgia likely just comes around behind our Riga and kills him outright. Uh, just something to be aware of is you're wanting to support your teammates and... Sometimes that is in getting spotting and capture zones, but other times that's in deterring the enemy team from pushing a certain area. Because this Georgia is definitely interested in pushing. The gun power obviously on Kitakazi is amazing, and I'm not running IFHE, I can go over the build a little later. I just find that you already are able to pen most cruisers, you pen 30, 30 millimeters of armor, and that's more than enough for most scenarios. And for a ship like Georgia, with its massive superstructure, really the IFHE really wouldn't help me here that much anyway. It would only help me a little bit on the stern and the bow, and that's it. Uh, so the extra fire chance, I think, is much more worth it. I'm pushing back in. You notice my team has basically won the other flank. This game is nearly over at this point. And this is one of the coolest things that destroyers are allowed to do these days. Um, this wouldn't have happened back in the day. Uh, I guarantee you I would have died doing what I'm gonna about to do. But you can just YOLO rush full HP battleships that know where you are and are ready for you. <laughs> this, <laughs> this North Carolina is completely ready for me. He does everything correct here. And there's nothing he can do. He's just dead. 
I guess the only thing he could have done better, I guess, is to accelerate and uh, try and get around the island. Um, and not put himself in this position. But for once the engagement starts, um, he does everything correct. He, he has his turrets turned. He's somewhat angled away. Um, I think he even had HE loaded to start with, which is supposedly the ammo choice you should have loaded. And he deals 7,000 damage to me, and that's it. Uh, yeah. You'll notice I saved my repair. I mean, my repair was still up, but saving your repair for that initial salvo to make sure you get the torpedoes off, um, you want to make sure your torpedoes stay up, because that is how you win these YOLOs. You'll notice um, I torped early, and that's because I wanted him to turn. And it's fine that I only hit two there, because we have a reload booster, and he's forced to turn broadside, and now he takes a bunch of damage. Um, here I misplayed a little bit. I should have just... I shouldn't have been shooting, or I should have increased the distance between me and the North Carolina. I took an extra shot from the NC's back gun, um, but in the end, it's not that big a deal. 154k damage already, and uh, yeah, this game is pretty solidly won. Uh, Destroyer's fun, man. If you're tired of the RNG fest and uh, perhaps things being less in your control, um, Destroyer's a lot of fun. And now I know you might be thinking, well, destroyers can't control their teams. Obviously, you can play well in a destroyer, and your teammates might make a dumb play, and there's just going to be nothing you can do about it. And that's true. And that's what the second game is about. My team makes a really dumb play. Um, but there are ways to play your ship that can actually um, complement their stupid play and actually make it not a terrible play. Um, the important thing is to remember that you need to work with your teammates. Even if it's a bad play, working with your teammates is going to be the best way to win games. Um, a bad play or a bad strategy, but everybody's working together, is going to turn out way better than a good strategy where nobody really is communicating it. Um, or at least nobody's really helping one another. Now here you can see just the pure gun power of the Kitakaze. We are on way less HP than the Ostergotland and we're easily winning this fight. Um, yeah. Kitakaze's a monster in this ranked season, dude. It's it's incredible. Especially in the tier 8 and 9 bracket. Wow. It's really, really, really strong. So that's that first game. Um, that was more of a damage dealer style of game, I would say. I, I The carry was more of a just dealing damage and killing things type of thing. But next game... Um, that one's more of a positional and strategical advantage, and the damage isn't nearly as crazy, um, and nowhere near as quick, but I think that one will help you a lot more if you're wondering where to position your destroyer to help your team the best. So, to start things off, you'll notice that I'm the only destroyer. That's really important. I need to stay alive. You'll notice also that the enemy team has two long-range radars, so I'm not going into sea. My goal is to spot the enemy radar ships coming towards sea and not get radared or killed by them. I'm just trying to get information and find out where the radars are. That's the most important thing. Never commit in a destroyer until you know where the radars are. Very common uh, places are F6, um, sometimes like, uh, or sorry, E6, D6, that kind of thing, or E5, E4, these kind of areas. Positioning around C. We all know C is the cap you need to control. And if you want to win the game. And, uh, well, radars are obviously going to go there. You see my radar is going behind the islands too. And there's the Petro on his way to be a radar threat. Obviously the problem with Petro is you basically can radar on cooldown when you're spotted in a Petro. And you're going to spot the destroyer uh, just with how good the concealment is. But we just turn, run away, and uh, disengage. Our... You'll notice our radar for a second spotted their Kitakaze. There he is. And that's really important information. So from this, we can basically gather the Petro radar is at C. It's likely the Moskva is going to A and coming around the flank, possibly at this point. And along with probably their Thunder and maybe the Lion as well. That's my guess. So I'm just going to try and play this pretty um, passively to start until we really know where everything is. And you'll notice my team has decided to <laughs> send it around the the 7-8 line. Um, it's important to stop a flank from there, 
but positioning that many ships on the 7-8 line is a really, really bad idea. The important thing is getting damage on ships as they cross um, from spawn over to these caps on the side A and B. People sit broad are, are broadside when doing that, right? They're all broadside to each other. You can see our Yamato and Thunder are broadside to the Lion Republic um, Thunder way in the back. Or that's the Moskva way in the back, but I think the Thunder is around here too. You can see how transferring across the map like that, you're broadside. And the important thing with this map is getting good damage on the ships that are crossing like that so that they can't push down the 1-2 line and get a whole crossfire on your, on your team. Um, but our team has not decided to do that. They're going up the 7-8 <laughs> line, which can work. The problem is um, if you don't have a good teammates or set of teammates that are trying to hold on to the 1-2-3 lines. Um, and you see that's where I'm playing here. I'm trying to complement their strategy. The weakness of going on the 7-8 line is that the enemy team just pushes around, gets A and B, and then sure, you might get C eventually, but pushing into A and B with all these islands like that, where they can all crossfire and support one another, um, if they just set up some ships on the C and D line and the G, H line, for example, and it's just GG. There's, that's just game over. So we have to hold this side. Um, basically, that's the only way to complement that play. And that's what we're going to do. So not a lot of damage, but that's okay. Now you're going to notice one other thing. The Petro has disengaged. I had hoped that we would have killed him when he was flat broadside like that. But the important thing is that he's low on HP and he's disengaging. And we've spotted the Moskva out on the C flank. So what does that mean? I get to capture C for free. Uh, we lost our Stalingrad for pushing in a really weird way into the B uh, the C cap there. Uh, that's crazy. Um, not a good play at all to send your uh, your ship in your cruiser. I mean, I know it's a battle cruiser or whatever heavy cruiser, but um, it's not very tanky <laughs> against the entire enemy team. So. Um, over committing like that, especially when the enemy team has a numbers advantage, is definitely a bad idea. And like I said, over like I just said, our Yamato is over committing, and so is our Thunder. They're all pushing in. I don't understand. When your team is so spread out and reliant on a flank, um, the people holding the middle can't be pushing. Right? There's two ships, a Yamato and a Thunder, versus a Moskva, a Lion, and a Thunder. And possibly, it's unlikely, but it could be Republic Crossfire. Republic's dead now, so that's good. Um, so our Crossfire has worked, that our team has made a little bit. We, we claw back one kill. And I'm about to get a cap for free, which is very, very nice. And the hope is that our team doesn't just YOLO in on the 7-8 line, and the enemy team pushes back across towards their spawn, um, and then just crushes everybody who YOLOs around the 7-8 line. That's kind of what I'm concerned about, since we don't have vision on the uh, Lion in Moskva right now. You notice I'm radared by the Petro again, but it's a short radar. It's really nothing to worry about. Um, so we just stop in the cap, even reverse a little bit. He might get one hit in, and... Uh, we're gonna get. It. We're gonna pick up a kill as a team. That's very, 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 very good. So you see, my my play here is all about gaining ground that the enemy team is giving up, and it's important ground. So it's important that we go get the B cap. It's really, really, really important to get that right away, because points often are what determines who wins at the end. And I know that 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 sounds like well, obviously the team with the most points at the end wins. Um, but but even before the match is over. Whoever has the cap lead or the point lead towards a thousand points can just sit back and hang on to their lead. Um, if you're down on caps and down on point tick, um, that's really bad because then you have to push in. And as we all know, pushing in, you're at a massive disadvantage to the enemy team. And if you're losing, maybe you're down on ships and down on caps, um, it's probably a loss. If you're down on caps point and not points, but you're up on a ship or two, or maybe you have a little better HP, that's when maybe you can pull out a win. Um, but these small strategical positional advantages you can gain just by getting caps for free um, is really, really, really crucial to the end game, where one team is forced to push and the other one isn't. And that's what you're trying to do. That's, in fact, what competitive is all about. Um, if you ever wonder why competitive seems to be 
really boring for 15 minutes and then suddenly there's a ton of action in the last five minutes well that's why it's all about these small little advantages gained and trying to uh, win the point battle at the end where you are you don't have to push the goal is to not push at the end of the game where you have won these small little advantages here and there to get the points and cap tick and that way it forces the enemy team to push into you and then you're you're in the advantage in that final fight um, that's the big thing obviously you can still lose it uh, you do have to play well to to win um, even when defending um, but it's it's those kind of advantages that you're looking for so here our team did manage to clean up the 7-8 line so props to them uh, for doing that uh, i think our crossfire from our yamato must have helped a lot as well he seemed to be focused out there quite a lot especially given uh how healthy this thunder is <laughs> and you'll notice i came back to b so i collected c for free and then i came right back to be and that's to prevent the Kitakazi from gaining the ground that I was giving him. I gave this DD a ton of space on the 1-2 line and I needed to come and contest him before he get comes and gets the B cap. You'll notice he smokes and I don't. That's a massive advantage for me coming up in the next fight. Um, if you can force the enemy ship to s enemy destroyer to smoke and you don't have to, um, I'm risking here taking a few shots from the Kitakazi and the Thunder, but for some reason they don't end up shooting me. I guess they want to finish off the Yamato, so fair enough. Um, but in the next engagement, when we both spot one another, it's likely that I'll just be able to smoke up and have my teammates spot for me, and then the DD is just going to die. If you don't have your smoke screen and you're pushed up into a very aggressive position, um, or you think you're going to get into a DD fight, you need to be disengaging. Uh, this Kitakaze sit, sat in smoke to try and farm out the Yamato, but the play for this Kitakaze as soon as he noticed that I didn't pop my smoke, was to start running back towards the Thunder. Especially with the Des Moines pushing in as well, but even if this was a Thunder and Kitakaze versus a Yamato and a Kitakaze, let's say it was a straight up 2v2, um, we'd be in the massive advantage here. Because you see, I'm pushing in here. The Kitakaze, with all its gun range, is going to get spotted as soon as it shoots. He's radared, but as soon as he's shooting in the open, he's going to be lit by my Yamato friend. So I just get to smoke up, I go dark, and the Kitakaze's still lit. And this is where having your smoke screen versus not having your smoke screen is a massive advantage and disadvantage in, in a DD fight. We're in the same ships, but we crushed him because we had our smoke screen still. Um, it's a big, big, big advantage. So just things to consider. Um, also, the torpedoes. Pretty obvious he just ends up torping when he knows he's about to die. So, leave the smoke screen. It's it's far better to leave a smoke screen that you think might be dangerous um, than to sit in there and farm. Obviously, I can just sail open water here and farm this guy. I have so much HP, and it's unlikely he's going to take the time to turn his turrets to shoot at a destroyer. Um, so, this is pretty easy for me to do. And that's it. That's the game. Pretty simple. Um, my team kind of sent everybody to the 678 line except for um, myself and a battleship uh, i don't know if our thunder necessarily counts with where where he died so early but and then we and then we sent our stalingrad into sea so early and died um, but if you play in a way that complements the team and complements the strategy your team is making you can make some massive plays happen and it's, it doesn't show up in the score sheet. Um, well, it will, but it, it won't show up in the damage numbers. I didn't have, like, 180k like I had last game or however much it was. Um, it was far less damage, but it was important positioning. And it was important um, collecting caps, denying the enemy team from certain areas, all these things. It's very, very important for DDs to know when to do which. Um, last game, it was important to get just get the damage. This game, it was way more important to get the caps and get those point leads and uh, deter the enemy from uh, from taking ground. Um, so that's two of my DD games that I've been, played and ranked so far. It's a lot of fun. Uh, way less RNG involved, and uh, it's all about decision making, and that is actually quite a bit of fun for me. So, so the way I've built up this uh, ship is not with IFHE. I've basically taken everything else for the guns. Um, your torpedoes are not the reason you're playing this ship. 
Uh, realistically, you're trying to get torps off on opportune targets when they present themselves, but you're really playing the ship as a gunboat. Um, you'll see preventive maintenance to try and keep my turrets and torpedoes alive. Last stand, pretty self-explanatory for that that skill. Pretty mandatory on DDs, I think. Uh, main battery and AA specialist, um, just better main battery reload. Um, you could argue that Adrenaline Rush is better than this. Um, as soon as you go below 3 quarter percent HP, or 3 quarters of your HP, um, you'll get a 5% reload or better. So I just have taken this to start with. I'll probably get AR as my next skill. Um, and then we're taking gun range because these are actually really good out to 15 kilometers. You can definitely hit things out there. If you wanted to play a more close quarters one, you could definitely drop this. And in fact, in ranked, it would probably be better to be more close range. This is a very good randoms build, I would say. Concealment, um, just it's really, really handy to have good concealment, even in a gunboat. Uh, allows you to disengage, allows you to sneak up on enemy destroyers, all that stuff. Um, and survivability expert because you're a gunboat and you will likely be taking a lot of damage in a game. Um, but yeah, I'll probably run Adrenaline Rush next. Um, if you wanted to, definitely, you don't need the range necessarily and you could take some other skills to make your ship a little better in close quarters combat, maybe even running a uh, uh, torpedo reload or something like that. Because the torps are really, really good. Uh, they hit hard, they deal a ton of damage, it's just their reload is bad. Um, but, I mean... That gives you the opportunity with the uh, reload booster to send out 12 torpedoes. Uh, that's a pretty big pretty big uh, spread. You're nearly a Shimakaze, um, and you have really good guns and good concealment. And decent maneuverability. Um, taking gun reload, concealment, uh, propulsion mod. This one's really, really good on this ship. It means you're a little bit more maneuverable. Um, engine room protection and main armaments mod. That is the way I like this ship right now, and I've had fun with it in ranked. Um, it's a really, really strong ship, and uh, so is the Harugumo, uh, for that matter, at tier 10. But as a tier 9, I mean, what does the Harugumo get? A little bit of HP and one more turret with worse maneuverability? Uh, this ship seems like better at its tier than Harugumo, so. I hope you guys enjoyed, hope you learned something about how to play ranked as a destroyer, uh, helping your team, or in both dealing damage and a more strategic way. So, thank you for watching, and I hope you have a great day.